Hello everyone, welcome to the, uh, the pre-recording of the first meeting of the Graphics Programming Virtual Meetup. This meetup follows the Berlin Code of Conduct. And the topic today is the book Ray Tracing in One Weekend. Ray Tracing in One Weekend is a series of introductory book by Peter Shirley on ray tracing and the computer graphics in general. Today, our topic will be, be chapter one to five. After finishing this first book, we still have two books to go. About me, I am an undergrad student at University of Colorado, and I am also an intern at Trimble SketchUp for more than a year. I am a computer graphics enthusiast, even though I am not an expert at anything. And I have a website at lesslylight.info and a Twitter handle at lesslylight6. I also have a YouTube channel, but if you're watching this video, I assume you already know what my YouTube channel is. The goal of the Graphics Programming Virtual Meetup is to work through books on various computer graphics topics together. And we will focus on algorithms and techniques instead of specific technologies or APIs, such as DirectX 12, Vulkan, uh, OpenGL, Metal, OptiX, etc., etc. But however, if you have something cool to demonstrate in those APIs, then you should definitely show us. The form of graphics programming uh, version meetup is we will have a weekly meeting. And before the meeting, uh, you, you can read through the book chapters we assigned for the meeting. And then during the meeting, we will walk through the book at first and then have discussion uh, afterward. During discussion, if you have an implementation of those book chapters, then this is your time to show us. And I will pre-record the walking through the book part as what I am doing now. Notice this uh, format is tentative. So if people have different ideas on how this uh, meetup should operate, then we will change the format. Why retracing in way we can First, this book does not require any much background knowledge, except maybe some high school algebra. This book is easy to follow, and it is available online for free. After we finish this book, there are a lot of uh, other computer graphics resources that we can consider to read next. Uh, this tiny render is a wiki tutorial on building a software rasterizer. And it is recommended by my friend Charles, who is also the co-organizer of this meetup. Physically based rendering is a book free available online. It is also focused on ray tracing, but it is quite advanced compared to the current book we are reading. Real time rendering is not a free book, but it is a famous book focused on real time rendering techniques. And ray tracing gems contains uh, uh, some some small uh, small papers uh, on ray tracing. This book can also be quite advanced because some of the papers are quite advanced, and this book is also available online. By the way, if you have any other suggestions, feel free to contact me and tell me what kind of. Uh, resources you, you think is also good for us to read together in the meetup. Now, now let's start to talk about this book, Reshacing in One Weekend. 
we will talk about the first five chapters, which start from to creating an image, create a vector class, create a array, a symbol camera, generate a background, and finally adding ray sphere intersection. So we will uh, at the end have a sphere on our scene. Before we delve deeply into the book, I want to talk about uh, when we talk about ray tracing. Uh, it can mean a lot of different things because ray tracing is not a single algorithm but a set of different algorithms that share some common techniques under the hood uh, but they are still different the evolution of ray tracing starts from 1980 when Turner Vidit had his famous paper on ray tracing and his style of ray tracing is called weighted ray tracing, where he have one ray per pixel, and when intersects with shapes, it sends shadow rays toward the light source. And we can we can see this hard shadow here, and also the refraction of this sphere, which is pretty nice, especially at 1980. The next uh, step of ray tracing is stoch stochastic ray tracing by Cook in 1984. In stochastic ray tracing, we send multiple sample rays towards the light source. And then in 1986, we have full-blown path tracing where we send multiple samples per pixel, and then we just use some uh, probability distribution to scatter the rays when it hits some surface so we will no longer shoot any shadow rays toward the light source and the same paper also defines the light equation which is one of the most important equations in the computer graphics let's talk about how to output the image we will use the PPM format because it is a simple ASCII text format that's really easy to generate by hand. And we first have some um, meta information like uh, the width and height of the image. And then is the max max color value, which in this case is 255. And then we just have RGB triplets for each pixel. It is a pretty simple image format. So we can easily generate it by using the standard output facilities in the C++ standard library or whatever language you are using. Notice this book use uh, output into standard output and then it used Unix pipe uh, to put uh, those uh, put those into the final image. In a more realistic implementation, we may be directly writing those information into a file instead of using standard output. But the idea is the same. Then yeah, we have an image like this. Now it's it's a vector class. Since we only care vector is a is a direction uh, in in space, and it doesn't have a position. It is just a direction with a lens. And since we only care about three D we will only have one vex free class and this class defines a bunch of algebraic operations we we assume to have for vectors then notice here we defined two type aliases for vector 3 which is point and color so in some of the more refined retracing implementation we may have separate types for points and for color 
this way, uh, because using this kind of affine types, we can avoid some kind of, uh, we can use type system to avoid some of the mistakes. In this book, we only have one VEX3 uh, representation and everything is uh, VEX3. This way, it is simple, but on the other hand, we lost some nicety of the type system. There are additional uh, algebraic operations we defined for vectors, including a dot product, a cross product, and of giving a vector and get the unique vector, which is a vector of the same direction, but the length is one. And with the vector representation, array is just an origin and a direction. And we can represent array as a function of the linear interpolation of the origin and the direction vector. Notice here, origin is a point and the, vector, uh, the direction is a vector, but in our mass notation, we do not distinguish those two just like in our code. And the ray implementation in the book is quite simple, just many boilerplate except this function where we actually plug the T in to get the result of the ray function. The, the book at the current stage have a fixed uh, hard-coded camera. Uh, its origin is at 000, zero, zero and it always face the negative z axis. It will generate ray from the top left corner and just scan it down line by line by a nested for loop as what you were expected. And the recolor function is hard-coded to a linear interpolation from a white color and a light blue color. And we use this color as our background. With with the previous code, we can have this image that is linear interpolation between uh, on the y-axis between the white color to the light blue color. Now let's talk about sphere. A sphere can be represented by a center C point C, or we can explicitly expand it into x0, y0, z0 with radius r. And we can, we can represent the, the sphere as an equation, just like we can represent a ray with a, as a function. So a ray is an equation where any point, uh, oh, I'm sorry, a sphere is an equation where any point on the sphere surface need to satisfy this equation. Oh, sorry, this, this should be y, y0, z0, sorry. And e, we can simplify this equation into the vector form. And then it will just become p minus c squared is equal to r squared, where p is some point on the surface of the sphere. So now we have two, uh, we have one equation and one function. And let's plug the sphere function into the ray equation. What we get is, is uh, another equation and we can expand the dot product. Now what we get is a quadratic equation as this b dot b term is t squared. In this case, b is the 
direction of the sphere and and the b dot a minus c term is a b term in the quadratic equation and a minus c square is the c term in the quadratic no sorry the whole this whole part is the c part of the quadratic equation now we have a quadratic equation the natural next step is to trying to find its root so we will rely on the high school algebra of calculating determinant to find the root so if we don't have any root then we know this ray doesn't intersect with this sphere if we have one root then we, we know this ray intersects with the sphere at this central point if we have two root that means we this ray intersects with the sphere twice but we need to pick the first point because the ray may get refracted or reflected at this point so the second point will not happen in the so the code is just calculating the discriminant and then we hard code the color if we if our discriminant is greater than zero we hard code the color red so that means if we intersect with a sphere we will show some red color otherwise we still show our background color and after that we get the final image like this thank you for watching this episode I hope you enjoy uh, and hope to, I hope to save some of you tomorrow in the graphics programming version meetup. Thank you.